we found a, a beautiful golden orbweb spider. These are amazing spiders and while not the biggest are, are known for building the strongest webs. The silk of these webs is incredibly strong and it's been known to catch and trap small birds. It gradually started getting active and moved around delicately suspended upside down from the web that was at an oblique angle. tiny hooks on the end of its legs that it uses to grip onto the web and makes its way delicately along these fine tendrils of web that it spins. This silk is a protein based substance and as a result it expends quite a lot of energy in producing it. Spiders will, will often consume the, the redundant pieces of web to reuse into spinning new strands. Just sitting quietly watching this, this beautiful creature was an awesome experience and it's just good to, to spend time around camp and just appreciate some of the smaller things that we find in this environment. Three praying mantises in an embrace. Neither of these males are actually mating here. You can see the, uh, the abdomens aren't coupled up at all. Um, it certainly seems like both of them are interested in mating, but they've got this female in an embrace here. She seems content just to, to stay in the middle, doesn't seem to be making any effort to get them off at all. Of course, mating for male mantises is a tricky business and uh, they sometimes get eaten for their troubles. The female will quite often just eat the head of the male mantis while he is mating. Males that have their head eaten in this way uh, actually seem to perform better and have greater success in the mating than males that keep their heads. I also found nearby a tiny little mantid, a minuscule little black one with some white bands on it. It's caught some kind of insect, even smaller than itself. This mantis is only about a centimeter long. It spends quite a long time clutching the insect in uh, one of its claws and devouring it. Here, these caterpillars are truly bizarre. Very large, several centimeters long, probably something like three inches, in fact. Uh, at first, when I saw the two of them together, I thought it was some kind of seed cluster. Uh, but looking close, you can see all the colors on the skin of these caterpillars. And then, and then those uh, protuberances <laughs> sticking out, it's quite amazing. And here, another caterpillar that's um, trying to minimize its chance of being taken by a bird. Uh, a bit of mimicry. It's uh, disguising itself as a bird dropping and just sits here like this on the middle of the leaf all day in full view, but of course disguised like this. Nobody seems to come down and, and want to take it. Who's going to come down and eat a bird dropping?
I spotted these small fry hugging tight against one of these rocks and in the background you can see the female Serenochromis. After a little while these fry started to draw unwanted attention from the other cichlids in the area and this one in particular looks like it could be a juvenile of the same species which would mean that cannibalism is part of life for these cichlids in the lake. As soon as one cichlid arrived on the scene, it seemed to draw attention from others and before you knew it there were four or five cichlids having a really good and close look at the small fry. Eventually it was too much for the mother and she decided to move in. I didn't actually see any cichlids pick off any fry on this particular occasion and she was very vigilant in her defense of them. She expends massive amounts of energy during the month that she cares for her fry as opposed to the male of the species who has no parental involvement whatsoever. Eventually she started to take a few of these fry into her mouth. But time again she would disappear and then return to the scene to pick up a few more. I can only suspect that perhaps they've grown to a size where you can't take them all in the mouth at one sitting and perhaps there will be a few stragglers left behind. Eventually it was whittled down to just a few fry left. I spotted another four or five on the top of the rock. Yep, space enough for them too. And ultimately, last two stragglers made their way in. We find that the lesser flamingos are up and active even before we arrive. Their flight paths reflect a vast interwoven web of wetlands and pans spread across the region with flocks migrating back and forth compelled by whatever it is that sustains them in their life cycles. I think what amazes me most is the amount and variety of life that so tenaciously holds into these pockets in the greater environment. It is broadly understood that the reed beds in any wetland system play an important role in the filtering and purifying of the water. But one must give thought, too, to the creatures in that environment and birds like Flamingo, which in their countless numbers play an even more important role in the purifying of water. Each bird actively pumping so many liters through its system each day sieving and cleaning that water as it feeds off the algae and small crustaceans. And that is a function in nature which cannot be replaced. So these are the creatures which keep my world alive and one has to make that connection. <laughs> 